Hello Standy lovers, Nick here from Raising the Standards. Welcome to this week's Winter Wednesdays free Standard Bread video training. Today I want to deep dive into some training philosophies. I feel like we've gone sort of on the right of focus recently, um, but I want to sort of talk about how Standard Breads learn. And I guess one real key thing that's been um, really important to me in my retraining and probably something that I feel like has um, really helped me to work with my horses quite consistently. Um, and that is the power of clarifying my workouts on an individual workout basis and understanding and respecting how horses learn. Um, I'm not going to deep dive too much into the how horses learn discussion um, or all the nitty gritties of how to ask my horse to do things. Um, if you are looking for that step by step, what do I do with my standard bread and how do I do that sort of thing and all of the aids that they're learning, we have our retraining the standard bread track to hack course, which you can go and have a look at. But um, one of the biggest philosophies that I have followed, which I think is really handy and I like to, would like to share with you today, is the idea that sometimes we get so focused on all the things that we have to teach our horse that we try and teach them too much all at once. And that can be really overwhelming for us as riders to realize, well, there's all these things I've got to try and get my horse to do before I can go and do the things I plan, which might be going to riding club or doing a dressage day or, you know, going on a big ride together safely. You know, there's lots of things that we need to learn that, um, and also behaviors we have to retrain, which particularly with standard bread, things like pacing and canter and, you know, really big skills, issues, habits, whatever you want to call them that actually need to be worked on very intensively before you can start worrying about all the other things. Um, I think externally there's a lot of pressure that's put on us um, and we might not even be aware of it on a conscious level uh, when we do buy a new standard bread. Um, if we are new to horse ownership, uh, that's, <laughs> that brings a whole range of um, things that you sort of get, got to get your head around from the care side of things to, okay, well, I've got my first horse or my, you know, my first horse as an adult and I'm still remembering all the things that I used to do as a junior and um, all of a sudden, like you forget things, but you're not only stepping into this space as your own, you know, dealing with your own, that the overwhelm of having your own horse sort of stuff, but also the fact that your horse is also going to need to be trained and quite green. For more experienced riders, there can be a sense and I don't really know what the word I would use here, but probably for lack of a better word, I'd probably say sometimes some riders can get caught up in that little bit of embarrassment nearly that maybe you were quite a good rider ticking along and you're on a more skilled horse who has been more trained and um, now you're going back to the beginning where your horse is running around like a giraffe and can't canter properly and try as you might, it sometimes can be you know, really hard to leave your ego on the fence post and to go back to that level that your horse needs you to come back to. And that is not worrying about what people think and really honing in on skills. So externally, there's a lot of pressure, I think, to perform. And what that tends to do to us is it makes us want to miss steps along the way because we get so focused on getting our horse to canter that we forget that there's a whole lot of things that come before canter before we get there. And I have talked about this in recent training, so I'm not going to um, sort of sit on that too heavily today. But, you know, there's definitely, I think, as standard bred people, this pressure to perform, but also this pressure sometimes that we're not even aware of to prove people wrong if they don't love standard breds like we do. And we encounter these people who are sort of say, standard breds can't do this, they can't do that. You kind of want to prove them wrong. And also some of us just really want to do justice to the breed and to take our horse and do all these awesome things that we've done before or that we want to do in the future and do it on a standard bread just to show off how awesome this breed is. So there's a lot of things going on, whether it's having to pull yourself back to that starting level again, whether it is starting from scratch with your first horse and just being overwhelmed by all the things, um, or, you know, as I said, there's a whole range of things that are going on there. So um, it is a scenario sometimes where we try and either jump steps or do something else, which I want to talk about today, which is, Sometimes we um, get a little muddled in what we're doing and we don't really plan out our workouts. So we're trying to do all the things at once. And not only is that overwhelming for us, but it's really, really confusing for our horses. They're already going through this massive change where everything that they used to do in harness racing is nearly the opposite in many ways of the things that we need them to do 
as riding horses. Everything from the way that they carry their bodies, the way their muscles are shaped, the gear they wear, the fact that they've now got someone sitting on their back, the fact that they have to learn things they've never learned before. Like when someone sits on your back, all of a sudden they kick their legs and that has to mean something now that they've never learned before. And we're pretty lucky that harness horses are driven with a bit in their mouth. So usually they're pretty well mouthed and they're long lines. So, um, you know, turning and stopping is is something that makes sense but you know someone sitting on your back and kicking their legs and telling you to go has to have meaning and then so do all of the aids that come after that um so i think sometimes we get in a rush to do things like the canner and the pacing because they're in the way of doing things that we want to do and we want to get there quickly but the other risk that we run is that we don't really have any clarity in what we should be doing in each and every workout and what that leads to is we get in the saddle and we try and do too much all at once. It confuses our horse. And when our horses get confused as standard breads, if you have a horse who used to be a pacer, I tend to find that the more frazzled and nervous they get, the more of those safety blanket sort of familiar, comfortable habits like pacing or like sticking your head up and running at race trot. You know, these are the little default settings for our standard bread sometimes. It's familiar, it's comfortable, it's what they've always done. And it's what they've done to make the humans happy in the past. So if our horses get frazzled, they tend to default to these harness racing behaviors. And what that can actually do is just create so many more issues for us riders. But also it can be really frustrating. Um, if you're trying to do a workout and your horse gets confused and all of a sudden they're pacing, you can sort of be like, where did that come from? We haven't done, you know, we haven't fallen into pace for a long time. Um, it is it is that default setting that we come back to and why it's so important that we don't overwhelm our horses and confuse them with too many messages. So I sort of had this belief and philosophy throughout my retraining that really my horses can only sort of learn and consolidate and really have mastered one new skill per workout maximum um, and then be able to replicate that the next ride without much remedial work. I think sometimes if we have a lesson, for example, and our instructor might throw at us you know, four different new skills, for example, how to bend your horse differently, um, a different aid for getting your horse to flex right. Um, you might approach canter in a different way using a different activity. You know, maybe you go for circles this time instead of straight lines, whatever it is. Like sometimes, yes, particularly in lessons when you've got someone there and it's quite intensive, um, you can be shown four or five different things that you learn in a lesson, but really they're things that you're learning that your horse might get a chance to approach. But I, I would suggest that it's very unlikely that if you're trying to teach them more than one thing, and it's quite a difficult thing for them to learn, that they're going to remember all of those things the next time you ride them. You're probably going to have to do some remedial work. But it is certainly great for riders to learn some of the different skills so that you can go back and work on them individually. And I think that's really the crux of this and what is important, that we we look at focusing on getting really good at whatever we're focusing on at the time rather than sort of being wishy-washy wishy washy, and you know maybe half achieving three or four different things that makes us feel good because we've done four or five different things but really we haven't consolidated them they're going to need more work and you know it, it gets a little flustered and a little blu um, blustery I think when you're trying to do too many things in one workout so I've always tried to sort of structure my workouts in a particular way. Now that's a whole topic in itself. I will say if you are joining us in September for our 30 days of Santa Bread success program, one of the activities will definitely, because we're going to have a different coaching kind of like this every single day with an activity to do, at least one, probably a couple of activities will be looking at how do you structure a workout? What do you put in your workout? Um, and how do we introduce new skills? So we'll get into nitty gritties, way too much detail for this particular talk today but if you are enrolled in that program then that is something that we would be doing so get excited because I think that's really interesting and a really key skill for all riders to be able to know how do you structure a workout um, but yeah I always have my workout plan and then I look at introducing a new skill and when I introduce a new skill what I'm actually doing is I'm giving my aids meaning um, so you know they don't know the aids to things so I have to introduce that aid and I do that in a particular way so that that aid now has meaning so that when I apply that aid they know what I'm asking for and then it is about you know seeking proof and proof really has been important to me at raising the standards it's about saying not saying my horse can canter when you advertise a horse you know 15 three hand gelding eight years old 
can do this, can do that, can canter. If I've only really got the canter a couple of times, like I can say has started to learn to canter, but unless for me, my horse can prove that they can canter every time I ask within reason, um, you know, and has done that maybe, maybe on five or six different rides um, in different areas, different settings under different distractions and pressures going on around them. You know, when my horse, if I put my leg on and say canter and I know I'm going to get a canter every time, no matter where I am, what's going on around me, then I can say my horse can canter. So I really do seek proof in what I'm doing. Um, and that's seeking out proof and working on that one skill. You know, I say one skill per workout as a maximum, but some some of the big skills like canter, for example, or like really correcting your horse's you know, counterflexion, those issues, they may be things that you have to work on across several workouts to improve and consolidate and improve and practice and practice and practice. And then you have a really good session. You leave the skill alone. You go about the rest of your workout, which as I said, there's a lot of things that go on around teaching a new skill. Um, you know, and then the next day, your horse may remember most of what they learned, but then you might look at refining it a little bit. I'm really into getting the horse to be quite you know, how I want them to be after a specific amount of workouts. I, I don't have really big expectations, but I'm not going to, for example, let my horse run into a canter um, and consistently that's the only way I can get them to canter. That might be okay for the first, second, third session, but then I might be sort of saying, okay, well now you can canter. Now what I need to do is get you to do that from a much slower canter. So it's actually off an aid and I can feel that real pop into the transition. You know, that might be something I work on in that particular, um, workout and then the next session I might come back to canter again still as the only new skill I'm working on and refine it further and refine it further and then it might be okay well now I've got the canter in the arena now I need to take it somewhere else or go to an instructor's house or go to a riding club and see if there's things going on can I still get that aid nice and popped you know where and when I want and how many strides can I get and what's my rhythm and tempo like so you know, focusing on particular skills and not just sort of chancing and saying, oh yeah, I fluked it, my horse can can canter. And you sort of fluked it once or twice, but they don't do it every time you ask and it's not particularly pretty. Like I'm more of the thinking that you get a lot more benefit long-term from actually going, rather than getting a wishy-washy sort of half canter and then moving on to the next thing, I'm gonna work really steadily on getting a really nice looking canter. And it's gonna take a while because my horse is gonna build strength and it might only be on their preferred lead and then I've gotta go and work on their non-preferred lead. Like by breaking it down, you actually stop muddying the waters and your horse gets a chance to really focus on what you're asking them to do. They don't get overwhelmed. They're not being asked to do 10 different things in a half hour workout. They're just being asked to do the workout as you plan and then to just work on this one skill. And you can certainly, as I just gave you an example, be working on different elements of if, of each new skill depending on how difficult they are. And that is also something for our 30 days of standard bread success students that we will learn how to do. So, you know, there's a lot of technicality behind that, but I think the message that I want to really relay here is you know trying to do all the things it's overwhelming it's confusing and it really lends itself to people rushing through things half doing things and that might get you through if for example you're a dressage rider um through maybe level five and four but man you're gonna really see problems when you get to level three and want to advance further if you haven't got a good quality cancer or if your horse is still falling back into pace or if your horse is counter flexed, you're not going to be able to do some of the more difficult movements. So I think being laser focused within each workout on what skills you're working on and not trying to do all the things um, is really, really great for you and for your horse and for making sure that your skills are really mastered. And it just, it makes it less, it just makes it so much more of an enjoyable process rather than trying to figure out when you get in the saddle, what are you gonna do? And then trying to do so many things that your horse then gets overwhelmed and falls into pace and loses all their skills and runs around like a giraffe because that is what our green horses do and why it is so important as standard bred riders particularly that we are aware of what we're asking them to do, of the immense change that they're going under and about how fair we are with how we structure each workout so that they are getting the best most positive experience on the whole. So that's just my little 
little um, thought for you today. Um, and yeah, I hope it really helps start to think about when you go out to ride like do you plan your ride or do you just get in the saddle and like How many things are you asking your horse to do and lately? What have you been working on with your horse? You know, these are really good questions to ask yourself because sometimes we need to take a step back look at the big picture but also do a little bit of self-reflection because really we have a huge responsibility to our horse we're the most important person in their life um, to make this process, as I said, really positive. Rider responsibility is something I'm going to talk about in an upcoming training, because I think that there are so many different things that we are responsible for that we maybe don't um, acknowledge or even realize just, you know, taking a, I take each ride or each time I see my horse as a random sort of event um, view of horse retraining. Okay, so that's it for me today. Um, think about clarifying your workout. Think about the great benefits of that. And I hope that maybe taking a step back and looking at how you do things can really help you. All right, guys. Bye.